in case anyone, you know, had any questions about the history of correctness of people, this is an edited clip, everybody. So it edits out some stuff and highlights the insane wrongness of Peter Hotez. It's really interesting about the conservative sites is because you really don't know what they're thinking until you know, until you've talked to people. And for them, you know, one of the big issues has been they create this straw man. The straw man is around vaccine mandates. They're obsessed that people are just going to, again, this comes out of this health freedom, medical freedom nonsense. That Medical freedom nonsense. And their biggest problem, they straw man. You know what that is, Dr. Hotez? That's a straw man. Their biggest problem, they make up bullcrap arguments. Oh, no, 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 no. But let's just let's just hear how your medical expertise, you you vaccine expert, has aged since what was this, February 26, 2021, assuming that the date of this video from Mays is accurate. Uh, accelerated in 2015. They're convinced that you know the either the US government or the National Guard or soldiers in blue helmeted UN helmets Talking are going to hold man. everybody down and vaccinate them. And <laughs> so they're talking about straw manning, you raging hypocrites. They don't have to hold you down and vaccinate you. They could just threaten to take away your job, your livelihood your kids in some cases. Oh no, but thanks for telling me that the conservative side's biggest problem is straw manning while you go ahead, Dr. Hotez, and straw man. Other than Dershowitz who said they could in theory, you know, plunge that needle into your arm. The concern was not that they were going to hold you down and vaccinate you against their cons against your will, although we didn't get far from that. The concern was that they were going to find other ways to end your life if you decided not to. Fire you, excommunicate you, take your kids away from you, not allow you visitation rights. And by the way, Hotez, they did all of those things. This obsession with mandates. And I say, look, no, right now, no one's talking about mandates. These vaccines will stop asymptomatic transmission. So I want to stop Protection. that one there. I want to stop that one there. They will stop asymptomatic transmission. Neil deGrasse Tyson's way of weaseling out of that was that, D -d dude, it evolved. We now know that they did not test for transmission. So Neil deGrasse Tyson's explanation, which would have been a legitimate one, had they even thought that it prevented transmission in the first place, would have been the, the proper logical weasel way out, but it would have been a weasel way out nonetheless. They didn't test for transmission. We know that now from the famous clip of the European parliamentarian, gray hair, uh, not gray hair, blonde hair, asking the British executive, of, hey, we were, no, we were moving at the speed of science. We didn't test for transmission. What did Hotez say this based on? These vaccines will stop asymptomatic transmission. They didn't stop symptomatic transmission. They didn't stop transmission because they weren't tested for it. So what did Hotez make this statement on? This is one of the questions I would ask. I'm not a vaccine specialist. I'm not even going to ask you about the science. I'm going to ask you about your logic. You made a statement. Did Pfizer tell you that at the time? Or did they tell you at the time that they didn't test for transmission? In which case, you are a liar. You're either repeating a lie because you didn't look at the underlying research. You either knew it was a lie, in which case you're repeating it right now, which makes you a double liar. Protection is not long lasting with natural infection a lot of the time. A lot of the time, by the way. So that's his wheeze load. Th this time I was wrong, but other times. It was more with the original SARS back in 2003, but not as much well with, with this one for reasons that we don't understand. So vaccine immunity is probably going to be uh, better and Get more durable. Eh. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that most people, I think vaccine acceptance is going to increase as people see the benefits. That's a of matter of opinion. It. That can't be wrong. Just so everybody appreciates. The last one is a matter of opinion. The other one, the other statements were not statements of opinion. It'll prevent asymptomatic transmission. They didn't test for transmission. So they lied to you and you repeated the lie. They told you the truth and you made a lie. And if you know now that they lied to you when they told you it's going to prevent transmission, like Albert Burla did in his April 1st, 2001 tweet, 100% effective. And you now know that they lied to you and you still trust the liars. You're no better than them. Jordan Peterson tweets out. It says, if Joe Rogan generously invites you to his massive platform to debate and offers a substantial sum to charity as an accompaniment, then run away if he does this and you run away and cast dispersions on his impeccable character while claiming victim status. Have I summarized your strategy? Peter Hotez. Peter Hotez writes, he won't debate in person. He'll just nitpick and choose what he chooses to debate on Twitter. Well, I think you've summarily, nicely summarized the false narrative currently promoted by the conspiracy websites and those who seek to monetize the internet. Pfizer can monetize their jibby jab. People can't monetize their expertise and their analytics, their analytical thinking. That's that's wrong. But if you want the real story, just read any one of the, oh, read the Vanity Fair link. Oh my goodness. But it gets worse. 
people. You can go read those rubbish articles or listen to my interviews over the last two days with Outfront with CNN, Mehdi Hassan. Go watch those interviews. That that's that suffices for the debate, everybody. That suffices for the debate. There was another guy. I don't have to debate Joe Rogan. I went on Aaron Burnett, CNN, the liars, the propagandists who pushed a slew of other disinformation campaigns. I went on there. I went on with Mehdi Hassan and he asked me a very, very solid 30 second question. Vaccines are good. Are they not? They prevent infection. Are they not? Anyone who says this is wrong. Are they? Thank you. And please affirm what I just said. Oh yes, it, it gets even better though. Everyone has come to Hotez's defense in a way that is, is not suspicious whatsoever. You got Mehdi Hassan, you got LA Times, you got Vanity Fair, you got BBC, CNN, they're all coming to Hotez's defense, despite all of his wrongness of the past in that one clip that we just saw in all of the tweets that I put together, where he says, we need to vaccinate kids to prevent transmission. We can halt transmission if everyone gets vaccinated. But everyone should be wearing face masks. Everything he has said has been wrong. This other guy just, oh yeah, here we go. Jeff Strorobinski. Don't know who he is. He might be a very nice person. Husband, father, friend, educator, podcaster, news, et cetera, et cetera. Sharp, witted, and humorous. Think nine times and tweet once. Oh, <laughs> if, I, if I had to guess, I'd say he was British. He says, Peter Hotes on Out Front with Aaron Burnett for nearly seven minutes, people. He doesn't need a debate. RFK Jr., he went on the shittiest propagandist network for seven whole minutes. Oh, sorry, nearly seven minutes. We're going to go through this interview right now. He went on nearly seven minutes with Aaron Burnett. Do you know what the kicker is, people? Peter Hotez spoke for barely three minutes and 15 seconds aggregate, and there was all of 20 seconds addressing the safety and efficacy of the COVID jab, half of which consisted of the clips from RFK Jr. and the other 10 seconds, Aaron Burnett saying, this is just wrong, isn't it? <laughs> Tell me I'm right. Listen Tonight, to this. NFL superstar Aaron Rodgers attacking one of the nation's top vaccine experts. Starts off, he's a victim. Aaron Rodgers, a moronic football player who probably has brain damage. How dare he criticize one of the top vaccine experts of the country? Just bear, this is a six minute and 49 second clip. The New York Jets quarterback posting this image of Dr. Peter Hotez on Instagram saying, quote, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. would mop this bum. I actually believe that would be true as well. I would love to see a debate where I'm proven wrong. Wrong, and Hotez just comes in and makes RFK look like a total anti-vax conspiracy theorist nuthead that, that Hotez claims him to be. I, I think I think uh, Aaron Rodgers is right. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., of course, is running for president. He's a vocal vaccine skeptic. Rogers' post comes after Dr. Hotez criticized RFK Jr. Mm -hmm. after a podcast he did with Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. and in that podcast, in that podcast. he repeatedly pushed unfounded claims about vaccines. And he called out Dr. Hotez by name. By the way, just, just so we're clear, how, we're, we're 34 seconds in. We haven't even seen Hotez yet. Nobody will debate me for 18 years. Nobody will debate me. I, I, as Hotez I, I don't want to glamorize RFK too much, but he looks chiseled. He looks like a statue that has already been carved to a historical figure. As many, many times to debate me. I've debated Hotez on the telephone. See, we use with, the word debate and discuss uh, interchangeably. He's kind of a referee. And, uh, you know, I, his his science is, is, is just made up. Oh, you mean like when he said that uh, the jab would prevent asymptomatic transmission? Like when, when he said that? He cannot stand by it. He can't cite studies. All right. Rogan, then, after all of this, comes out and tweets at Dr. Hotez. And he tweets, quote, Peter, if you claim what RFK Jr. is saying is misinformation, mm -hmm. I'm offering you $100,000 to the charity of your choice if you're willing to debate him on my show with no time you imagine, Apparently, the pool, the, the charity pool is up to $3,005,000. $3 million because of other people's um, pledges, and the 5000 came from me. I will donate. I'll contribute $5,000 to this pool to see it happen. I'm not quite, in, one day, may I be in the realm of donating $100,000, $3,005,000 charity pool for the world-renowned vaccinologist, vaccine scientist to debate the lowly uh, presidential aspiring uh, conspiracy theory anti-vaxxer nut. And he says, no, that's not just showing you that he has no faith in his ideas because maybe he could say, look, ordinarily I wouldn't. He doesn't care about poor impoverished people. I mean, oh yeah, he, he gives, he makes cheap vaccines, yada, yada. He's turning down an opportunity to raise $3,005,000 for a charity of his choice. And then Elon Musk jumps in, mm -hmm. tweeting, quote, mm -hmm. of Hotez. He's afraid of a public debate because he knows he's wrong. How could Elon say that? I mean, we just heard Hotez, I'm going to bring up my, my montage of, of Hotez afterwards. 
We just heard Montez say something that was factually incorrect, scientifically incorrect, and above all else, either fabricated out of whole cloth or dishonest because he knew it wasn't true when he said it. By the way, we're a minute, 23 seconds into the six minute, 49 second clip. We haven't even seen bow time end yet. And Dr. Hotez is now out front. And, and doctor, there's a lot I want to go. talk to you now we about see him. this, a lot of layers. But let me just start with where we are at this moment. Let's You're start. now dealing with personal threats. Shouldn't, shouldn't have to deal with it. Shouldn't have to deal with it. How is this situation different than anything you faced before? We are one minute and 39 seconds into a six minute and 49 second interview. We haven't heard a word from Dr. Hotez and it starts off with him being the victim. I, I think it has to do with, with the volume, the intensity, and the fact that now pe people are coming to my home. You know, I've been going up against anti-vaccine groups for a couple of decades because I have a daughter with autism and wrote a book, Vaccines Did Not Cause Rachel's Autism, about my, my daughter. But what's happened over the last few years, it's become the movement is, is still continues around autism, but it's shifted to become more of a political movement and it's better organized, it's better funded, it's politically motivated. And I think that's what you're seeing now, this play out um, in a very organized uh, fashion that, that's really troubling and, and extremely aggressive and at times pretty scary. I can uh, only so imagine. I can only imagine, by the way, nobody should be showing up at his door, even if they think they're doing street independent journalism, period. Two minutes and 25 seconds into this interview, Hotez has been talking for 40 seconds and only about what a victim he is in all of this. And, and look, the reality of this is, is part of the reason this is in the conversation is that- You can't stop now, tweeting about it. RFK Jr. has right. been polling around 20% in various polls uh, as a challenger to he President Biden for the Democratic nomination. can't stop tweeting about it, his wife right? in so the that's news. why people are, are, are so focused on him, right? And yet right? he is perhaps- uh, he's done a lot of environmental work in his career, but perhaps mm -hmm. best known for what he has chosen to make his central statement, right, which is claims about vaccines. And here he is uh, on the COVID vaccine. We're As three we minutes all in. now recognize the COVID vaccines were neither safe nor effective. If you got vaccinated, you're more likely to get sick. You're more likely to get severe illness. And you're more likely to die than if you were unvaccinated. I'm sorry. Can, can Hotez not dignify himself with a debate to, to challenge that statement? I've heard that statement. And then I've heard that the defense to that statement is you're, you're more likely to get it, but it's going to be less severe when you do. One thing is for certain, I know that pretty much everybody who got vaccinated got COVID afterwards. I'd like to thank the extra protection that was provided to me by my 17th booster. I uh, thank the vaccines and the protection. Every single person who got the jab, the most vocal ones, including Hotez himself, got COVID afterwards. Oh, but there's nothing to debate there. It's, it's a crazy thing. I don't even have to dignify that with response, which is why everybody came up with the cut and paste. I'm thankful for having been vaccinated and the boosters and the increased protection that it has offered. And my symptoms would have been worse had I not gotten vaccinated. Um, those things are not true. Uh, I should just, you know, right, Dr. Hodos, those yeah, things are simply not true. Um, and moving you on, the book, moving on. Uh, that you wrote That's about it. your daughter, right? She has uh, autism and you wrote a book. That's the debate on the, 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 the COVID jab safety and efficacy. It's simply not true. Moving on. This man is a liar. I try not to impute ill intentions. This man is a liar. He's seeking the shelter of fellow liars, Aaron Burnett, Mehdi Hassan, CNN, MSNBC, Vanity Fair, BBC. We're three minutes and 27, three minutes and 23 seconds into the six minute, 49 second clip. Hotus has talked for like a minute and there's been 20 seconds dedicated to jab efficacy. And that was it. Explaining why vaccines are not the cause of that. So this whole debate comes up uh, that, that Rogan's saying, do this debate, give $100,000 to charity. Um, and uh, three point three million five thousand. it. What's the reason that you don't think that that Listen is worthwhile? Well, you know, I've had as as Bobby, what, what I, which is what I would call Bobby. him when I, when I would be speaking with him, used, would rightly points out we've had a number of conversations, uh, especially in the year 2017, when we've had a number of conversations, especially in the year 12, 2017, three years before COVID and four years before the COVID jab. Yep. Those are relevant conversations to the question of the COVID jab efficacy. You liar. He announced he was going to be appointed to head a special commission around vaccines. And, and I, be I hope you rot in hell. Vaccine scientists harassed after Joe Rogan challenge. I didn't realize that if you get messages that say, I hope you rot in hell, it's considered harassment. I, I can claim harassment status now. And by the way, notice how many times they recycle this one Chiron, Chiron, whatever the hell it is. Notice how many times they rerun this, I hope you rot in hell in the bottom. If I had a nickel for every time I heard, I hope you rot in hell, uh, go kill yourself. If I had a nickel for, I mean, I, I don't even talk about it. Gans speaking with him, Just actually notice. at the request of the National Institutes of Health. And, 
and it, it was an exercise in frustration because I I'm did sure site studies and sure in-depth studies. And I'm in sure fact, you, I sure put did. it all together in the book, The Vaccines Not Cause Rachel's Autism. Uh, but, you know, it was it was frustrating because you would keep on moving the goalposts. I mean, Confession uh, initially it was about the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine that that was said to multiply in the colon and somehow that led to autism and that was debunked with large epidemiological studies and then it was shifted to thimerosal preserve you notice how easy it is to have the debate when your interlocutor is not there he says there's a difference between a moving target and a multi-targeted uh, argument but if i'm if i'm if i'm predicting confession through projection as to whether or not rfk is the one with the moving target or it's actually dr hotez I, I know what I think already. Derivative, and he was a big proponent of that in the 2000s. Look and at Erin. Yeah, she's smiling. Uh, mm -hmm. When that got debunked, it was uh, spacing vaccines too close together. And they talked about this concept right. of greening vaccines. And, and then it was Alabama well, vaccines. So did, did, then, did, did, you, did, you, did, you, did you respond to that? Does anybody think it's a great idea to get all your, all your shots on one day, given that they do, in fact, trigger immunological responses? It wasn't even about uh, uh, autism anymore. It was something called chronic illness. So it was always kind of this pair came of whack mole or, or or moving the goalposts and 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 that's what it would be like if if, if I went on uh, Joe Rogan it's it's, it's oh, not really? productive oh it's not productive uh by the way it everything that Hotez just talked about pre-covid everything is pre-covid and he's going to use that as the pretext to say it's equally useless to have a debate as to the safety and efficacy of the covid jab uh, to do it. And, and in some ways it, it kind of sets the whole field back. Oh, yeah. So let me quickly ask you back. that point, Elon Musk, right? He said, you're afraid to debate RFK Jr. because you know, you are wrong. Now I should just note that, uh, Musk hosted Kennedy for a Twitter spaces forum. He has more followers than any other human alive on Twitter, 144 mm -hmm. million. Oh, wait until he we is get the richest person afterwards. in the world. Um, people pay attention to him. And he's, just to state the obvious, an intellectually formidable and successful person. By the way, how long has Hotez talked in this interview? Five and a half minutes in? How impactful is it that he's saying these types of things? Very. Well, remember, between RF, RFK Jr., Joe Rogan, and, and Elon Musk, pretty much that's every follower on Twitter. And I'm not going to use that opportunity to talk to every follower on Twitter to show them what a goalpost-moving conspiracy theorist anti-vax nut RFK is. Imagine that. Imagine saying no to that opportunity. Woody Allen said 90% of success is answering the phone. Hotez is letting that phone ring and then saying, stop calling me. So that that's a big that's a big space. Yeah. Um, and look, you turned it I've, down. I've and said, three million. Uh, multiple and 5, times to Joe Rogan. I was on twice uh, on his show. I said, you were on twice. And we have questions from that. That I'll come back uh, anytime. Just not with RFK. Especially during that Delta wave when that when he was inviting some anti-vaccine activists and I thought that was doing some damage. I said, mm -hmm. let me come on, Joe. I'll, okay. I'll talk to you and I'll explain why vaccines are effective, why they're safe and why they'll save your lives. But he ignored those emails. Oh, he, uh, he ignored them. He's faulting Joe Rogan for having ignored those emails, allegedly assuming Joe Rogan even saw those emails back in 2021. And now he's refusing to do what he's faulting Joe Rogan for allegedly not having done in 2021. Does that make sense to you? He didn't respond to my messages when I said, I'll come on to discuss this anti-vaccine movement, which I think is harming the, the Rona jab, but I won't do it now when Joe Rogan and the rest of the world is clamoring for it. Hmm. That, that makes sense. I got to be a, a, a virologist to understand that that's bullshit. I wrote to him in 2021, 2022, and then I finally mm. gave up. Oh, I finally gave up. Because you know, Joe look, Rogan doesn't get very many emails, Dr. Hotez. I mean, you, you, you're, you should be very certain he saw your email. Uh, I'll come on whatever Twitter format you want to use and, and have that discussion. Just with not them. with. But in terms of RFK Jr., I've been there, done that. I've had multiple discussions with him. They don't go anywhere. He doesn't really understand uh, the science behind So get uh, Malone. Uh, vaccines get McCullough. And, and doesn't really get understand Weinstein. the science of autism. And so I think it would just, and, and he doesn't really want to listen. And uh, so he doesn't really want to listen. Well, Dr. Hotez, I appreciate your time. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Uh, he doesn't really Thank want you. to listen. Can you believe the level of, of confession through projection? He doesn't really want to listen, says the guy who doesn't want to listen. <laughs>